let's do this thing. Rafi's Rants! Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the studio. So yesterday I got a question that actually caused me to go into a mini rant. Dane contacted me and said that they were going to be talking to uh, one of those artist mentors and they were a little worried about talking to them because they had seen some material from them after the fact, after they had scheduled a Zoom call with them that just didn't really jive with what it was that they wanted. In fact, this person, the stuff that they were saying kind of discouraged. The reason that I'm doing this video is because I know that a lot of you guys reach out to like uh, professionals, people that are successful and things like that. Um, some of you pay for like programs and things like, and I don't want to shame anybody for like paying for an artist program, but I do want to warn you that you do want to be careful if you are giving your hard earned money to somebody to make sure that your values are aligned, especially when it comes to something as subjective as art or as personal as creating an art career, like it really is important to, um, you know, check up on whoever it is that you are going to give your money to. One thing that you guys know is that whenever I tell you my thoughts or anything like that, I tell you, take it with a grain of salt because everything that I talk to you about in these videos, this, this is all just my experience, the stuff that I'm going through or that I've gone through. Every single artist out there, their journey is very, personal to them. It's, it's, it's an individual journey. It, 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 there's no way to really write something across the board that's going to say, hey, this is exactly what's going to make you successful or you need to do these things because these things are important because everyone has a different opinion. Obviously, my opinion in approaching things is not very uh, academic. It's very much like Rogue. You know, that's why I have the Rogue Artist series because it's all about just jumping in, blazing your own trail, doing it your way, that kind of thing, that doesn't really jive with everyone. So it's always important to have a second opinion or a third opinion or a fourth opinion or look at a various amount of stuff, but don't get pulled by it. Don't get dragged because this person says that this is what you're supposed to do in the art world, but it doesn't really jive with you, then then it probably means that it's it's not your jam. So Dane had scheduled the Zoom meeting with this person because they had heard ad advice from them. They had heard that other artists were like ranting and raving about their advice and, you know, a bunch of good stuff. And honestly, I looked into this person and they do have some good advice, but there's a lot of stuff there that just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to me. And I think I know why. I'm going to read these. One of the things that she said was the idea of doing art for art's sake or expression only is narcissistic and self-involved and the people who focus only on themselves and don't consider their audience when creating are not helpful to the world. Obviously, I disagree with this very, very much. All art started as commission work. No, it did not. She's talking about history. All art did not start as commission work. And this idea of art being solely for self-expression is new and toxic idea. That is complete and utter bullshit. Madam. Obviously, she doesn't know of artists like Frida and several other artists. She's just one example. The, the fact of the matter is that art has always been about self-expression. And back in the old days, yes, you had patrons that would commission you to do like the Sitting Chapel or like castle. You, mostly it was like religious icons and things like that. But that's not all the art that was out there. In fact, there is a lot of art that was very personalized that, that was all about self-expression. And some of the art that we really venerate now that capture the times and maybe some of the struggles and the wars and things like that, those were not commissions. So so she's uh, full of, you know. The second thing she said is, you will not have much of an art career without proper gallery representation. Okay, so this is very outdated and this one really will give you an insight. She's not actually an artist. She is a former artist. She quit art uh, years ago and she opened up a gallery. So like, that's where like, I'm like, okay, you're, you're kind of, talking a lot about your gallery and all the information that you put out there and you make it seem like, you know, you're not going to have an art career without proper gallery representation, which is, that's crap. 
So number three, she says, you should master your style of art and have a large body of work before going public with it or approaching galleries or shows. This is one of those things that's like so cookie cutter, like you have to have a large body of work. Now, I agree, you should be working on art. You should be creating art, whether you're putting it out there or not, just create, 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 create. But as far as like needing a large body of work, like what does that even mean? Like how many do you need? Like if you're doing your first, let's say festival or show or market, is 20 pieces enough? Like. This is such a, this is like one of those things that people just repeat over and over and over. You need a large body of work. It, like it sounds good, but it's complete and utter bullshit. I do agree that, you know, you want to really, really fine tune your art and get it going. But that's the process. Like you never get it done. When people talk about mastering your art form, like you never get it done. You're always a student to the art form, to changing up the mediums, to learning new things. Like whenever people say like, oh, that person is a master, that just means that they've been doing it a long time and maybe they're more versed in it than the person that is calling them a master. But really, you never get it done. You're always, always, always learning. You're always moving forward with your art career. So like to work on a body of work and become a master before putting yourself out there, it just, it doesn't jive with me because I know that in my own career, a lot of people have followed me and I have definitely grown. I mean, if you're an artist and no matter how long you've been putting yourself out there, you're not growing, um, I, I don't, it's, it just, it's another one of those things that a lot of people love to say and it's just, it's crap. Number four, the fourth thing she says, oil on canvas are the most sought out medium from collectors and galleries. The bottom of the rung are drawings and the bottom of the rung, ooh, are drawings and illustrations on paper. The tier of mediums goes oil, acrylic, then watercolor, ink, and pencil. That, that is just perpetuating a bullcrap idea that is out there in the art world about the mediums that you use and whether or not you are sought after or you're good. The thing is that a lot of people don't know, like a lot of collectors, they don't know the difference between these mediums. They just see something that they like. And usually what you end up with is gallery owners or people out there that are in the art world that want to seem like they're imp professional, important, that they have knowledge. They're the ones that are going to say that, oh, there is a difference in mediums. And the truth of the matter is like when you're working with it, I love working with oils. Oils are very, very forgiving. Um, acrylics are not forgiving. Acrylics, you know, you have to know what you're doing with acrylics in order to make it look the way that you want it to look. Oils, it's the same thing, but they're two completely different ways of creating. There, There is no comparison to one or the other. A, an artist chooses oils or they choose acrylics or they choose watercolors because that's their favorite medium or that's maybe what they want to work on or maybe that's what the, the work of art is demanding at that time. To say that one is better than the other, that's a perception that is perpetuated by gallery owners, by people in the art world that are talking to collectors that don't know any better uh, that like a piece and they're like, oh, well, that's a watercolor piece that's at the bottom of the rung. That that statement pisses me off because I'm like, you are not even creating art and 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 you're you're trying to sell art to your collectors, but you're the one that's educating collectors on how to buy art. And if this is the information that you're telling them, you are not helping artists. I don't care if you have, if you are uh, doing consultations and charging artists for your stupid consultations, like you are not helping artists. Um, she also says that she read a comment where she was criticizing an artist saying that what they do is not, is design and it's not art. This is, this is one of those things where it's just stupid and it represents exactly what's wrong with the art world, right? Cause like we have these neat little labels that we want to put everybody in like, oh, well that's a fine art painter. That's a, this, a, that's a crafter. That's correct. Well, well, that's not art, that's illustration, like all that stuff. And honestly, it's all art, it's all art. If you are creating something from, from you and you're putting it out there, it's art. And th this is one of the problems that, that, that makes things so confusing for artists because they're looking for that label, they're looking for that validation. And the fact that you have a gallery owner that is putting information out there saying that they're helping artists yeah, that's where it's like, this is false advertising. 
you are you are not coming from the perspective of the artist. Artists are the ones that innovate. Artists are the ones that the reason that art is what it is now, it's because of the artists that put blood, sweat, and tears into their art, not gallery owners telling artists what is art and what isn't art and labeling some bull crap. Like I just that this is really making me upset because this person is seen as an expert who helps artists. And I'm like, you think that your words, what you're saying is law. And like, this is not jiving. This is not jiving. Number six, she also told someone that they are not a painter because they paint on paper and don't cover the whole paper. They are a drawer and the drawings are much less sought after. You are a drawer. You are not a painter because you didn't cover the whole paper. What does that even freaking mean? All the collectors that I have and most collectors that I've met, people that follow other artists, they don't care about this stuff. They just don't care about this stuff. So for somebody to go out there and say, well, that's you're not really a painter because you're doing it on paper. And if it's paper and you don't cover the whole thing, then you're a drawer. It doesn't matter if you use paint or not, you're just a drawer. And like, this is, this is the stuff that's out there. My daughter's going to college for acting and she came back and she was telling me about the going ons there w between professors. And, and it just, I'm like, there is something really wrong right now with a lot of the information that's getting out there. Um, instead of motivating and inspiring artists or creatives of any type to really, really pursue what it is that they want to do, it's almost like people are telling you, do it the way that I do it because that's, that's how it should be done. And the thing is that that hits close to home for me because that was the thing that one of my teachers told me was that you will never make it as an artist. And guess what? This is what I do for a living. The truth of the matter is that when somebody is successful, they will never put someone down. They will never put limitations to the possibilities that are within that person. They will never tell them that they won't succeed. They will say it's not going to be easy and it's going to be hard. Every successful person that I know that I admire is somebody that really, really will inspire you to keep going, not give you a bunch of meaningless rules and tell you that uh, that th this is not art or that's not art or if you're doing it, you're gonna fail if you do it that way. You're gonna fail if they, how, the, how do they know that you're gonna fail if you do it that way if they've never done it? At the end of this, Dane, I will say, you don't need a consultation call with this person. Blaze your own trail. Figure it out your, yourself. There are plenty of books on art out there, in, including mine. There's a bunch of books out there that really talk about putting yourself out there, like really just putting yourself out there. And ultimately at the end of the day, that's what makes a successful artist. An artist that just keeps putting themselves out there, falls on their face and keeps putting themselves out there and things look like they're not gonna work and they keep putting themselves out there. You don't have to pay a bunch of money to have a Zoom call with someone who's gonna give you some bullshit answers simply because they wanna make money off of you. You are either selling art, you are either creating art, selling art, putting yourself out there, or you are teaching people how to put themselves out there. So if somebody's gonna give you advice on something, check your sources, like really check your sources, look into it. If you're gonna give money to somebody, really look into it before you agree to anything. Look into it, see if they actually have a career, uh, make sure that the information that you find is not just on their website, because obviously that information is all gonna be biased. Like, do not pour money, your money into hard-earned people. Make sure that they're artists who are selling art, not people that are selling marketing courses and, and stuff like that, because there is a big difference. And don't ever, ever, ever allow anyone, anyone, no matter what they say, to discourage you from doing your thing. Don't ever allow that. Don't ever allow that. So, yeah. So that's it. That's my rant. I was much more angry yesterday, so you got you got a calm version of the rant. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's complete bullshit. So just to let you guys know, we just got back from my daughter's wedding. My youngest daughter is staying with us. Uh, this, it's been a very good week. I am feeling much better. I know that the last video was, I was talking about burnout. 
I am feeling much better, uh, much more relaxed, and I'm looking at changing things, my, the way that I do things in the future. And there's going to be some changes that are going to be going on uh, across the board with everything we do, and I will be updating you on those changes. I got some stuff to do today. As I said before, my daughter uh, is you know, going to school for acting, so she's excited about filming some things. I also have very, very many commissions that I'm working on, and we are getting ready for a big solo show that's gonna be happening in August where Clee and I are gonna take over an entire gallery space. So I'm excited about that. It's just a lot of work. Oh yeah, and on top of that, I'm recording an audiobook that is going to release, uh, or two audiobooks that are going to release in August. So we've got a lot on our plates, um, but again, after the burnout that I experienced, there's no way that I'm gonna let myself go back into that. So I'm moving things around and figuring things out, and I will let you guys know what's going on with that. And other than that, it is very good to be back and talking to you and, and getting messages from you guys. Um, it, either way, you guys were watching some of the old videos and stuff and commenting, and we got to read those comments, and you have no idea how much I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, without further ado, I will be going, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm doing stuff today, and that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Um, listen, I absolutely freaking adore you. You guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, adios.